don't answer that next because we do have Christine on. We got her on uh, via landline. Christine, I, I'm sorry. I saw you had to log out and log back in. For some reason, it, it will not let me add you to the conversation um, on Skype. It probably has to do with me having to log off to uh, to get you back on here. So we have you on landline. Uh, for those of you who don't know, her uh, YouTube account is iChicaX4, and she goes by Radchick, and she's a radio host and a very, uh, apparently, a very gifted uh, columnist because uh, she's had some material uh, up on rents with uh, well over 100,000 views. So, uh, Christina, Malik, welcome to the program. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, sorry about that. My computer no completely froze up, but I had the same problem Tuesday. When I went to do the show, I actually had to go to another YouTuber's house and do the show from her house. And we had this problem with a few people that we've tried to interview on Nuked Radio as well. I don't know if the host that rents has been having similar problems, but uh seem to be having a lot of weird <laughs> with, with your Skype in general or, or with your computer? Well, with both. And, and the hosts have all had kind of a variety of problems that have either corrupted their hard drives. I've only had issues with the Skype, but my producer who uh, who is on the show as, as a co-host with me, she said she's never seen the kind of problems that we've been having lately. So, I mean, it's just kind of comical. It's a pain to work around, and if uh, somebody is causing some kind of interference, they are not doing a very good job because we always seem to be able to get around it. Well, I, I, Brett just said, no, he hasn't been having problems, but, um, you know, Smart Scarecrow has been, uh, who I, is in the chat room right now. He's uh, helped me with some audio, uh, technical issues. And he's been, com he has commented to me that, that, uh, the rinse feed over the last year or so has experienced, uh, many, uh, many interruptions. And I get that in the chat room sometimes. So that, you know, it'll be, it'll go digital or out for a bit of time and then come back on. So who knows? I don't know if it's just the uh, technology faltering. Or if it's a planned orchestrated attack, right, Christina, against the rad chick. Welcome. Hey, I'm really glad you're back. We we were talking. You you probably heard us uh, when you were on hold there. We started the first hour with some economic news, and then you know it always ended up where it does, which is you know FEMA camps and uh, government uh, takeover. You know, I, I want to jump right into a, a quick report from you on how things are going with radiation levels. I'm on your YouTube uh, 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 account right now. I'm very happy to see you're over 2,000 subscribers. Guys, if you're not a subscriber, please do so. She puts out a lot of good info. Um, just a quick Google search, and I can find the fear of radiation is now uh, starting to be leaked out slowly uh, into the mainstream. Stories right here I'm looking at saying we're going to be experiencing high levels of radiation for a decade, and that's a great big duh to people like you who have been uh, you know, screaming since uh, the disaster. Last night we spoke about the number of reactors around this country that are identical, General Electric, uh, Mark whatever's uh, reactors that were in uh, Fukushima, and we have them all over this country. So how was our yeah, radiation Mark levels? One, the ahead. Mark 1 BWR, we have 23 of them, and they're considered high-risk plants for a, a multitude of reasons. In fact, the guys that designed them, a few of them quit in protest after they completed the prototype. Originally, that reactor was designed so it could load fuel into submarines, which is why they put the spent fuel pools on the top of the building. And after they did a, a, a prototype, the engineers that designed it, there were two or three of them, actually quit and said, we can't go through with this plan. They didn't realize the inherent risks of this design, especially in a meltdown scenario, that these ponds were only made to hold fuel temporarily until it cooled down a little bit and then could be moved into a long-term storage facility, which was supposed to be Yucca Mountain, which we don't have anymore. So what these pools are now are long-term storage. In fact, a couple of years ago, ago, the NRC okayed the pools to be used in <clears throat> a much more dangerous way. They're allowing them to piggyback the fuel and put twice as much in as they were originally designed for because they don't have anywhere to put this stuff. And so yeah, it makes and, the, the I mean, this, very this heavy. Is, this is what the, the spent fuel is what, as soon as it loses uh, its ability to be cooled, it, it, I mean, what, does it melt through the roof and then it exposes the reactor? Well, it needs to be kept at a certain temperature so it doesn't start 
uh, uh, fissioning, and because the rods are in close proximity together, if they are not covered by enough coolant, then um, the, the fuel cladding, which is the zirconium cladding, starts melting down. That releases hydrogen in that process, and that's what made some of the reactor buildings explode at Fukushima. But what we have now in Reactor 4 is a building whose structure has been very compromised by the explosion that it had, and that fuel pool is just loaded with fuel rods. And some of them are MOX fuel, and some of them are fresh fuel, which was intended to go into Reactor 4, which was being um, maintenanced at the time of the earthquake. They were uh -huh. supposed to load that reactor that day. We have brand new, extremely hot fuel rods in that pool as well. Dex, did you want to jump in here on the uh, on the radiation? Uh, well, you know what? Before you do, though, have you are you still doing the monitoring of the uh, uh, the equipment that's around the country, seeing spikes in different regions? Are we still following the pattern of jet stream? Yeah, we we have been, and with precipitation. Although um, there's a few Facebook pages that have been started. One is called Radiation Watch, and it's just for people who have Geiger counters or are looking to get one to get more information, and we have people that are posting from all over the country about the readings that they're getting. And, I mean, it's very predictable in terms of where it's going to fall out. If you look at the jet stream, the tropopause, and, and certain storm conditions, but because it's been going on for so long, we have a lot of this stuff laying around now. It's on the ground. It's on the trees. And it's even being measured in pollen in Southern California which was a problem they only expected to see happen in Tokyo. And that research was published on any news last week by Arnie Gunderson. And we have the, the pollen that's now flying around with radioactive particles attached to it. And, you know, people people really are, should be are wearing breathing that. It in. They're breathing it in. Are, are yeah. we seeing, uh, how about spike levels? I, and mainly, you know, of course I'm, I'm going to be, uh, a little bit self-centered here. Last time you were on, it was spiking all around me in the northwest. Here, are you still seeing uh, that kind of those kind of numbers? Um, yeah, at, at times we are, and and they seem to also coincide with um, when we see steam events going on at Fukushima, where there's a, you know there's been a couple of occasions since January 1st where um, on the cameras you can visualize like smoke coming out of some of the buildings or some of the, right. the pile of buildings that are left, especially Reactor 3. And a few days later, we start seeing really sharp spikes, especially Washington and Oregon and, and Northern California. We don't have a lot of people with Geigers in Canada. There's a few, but, you know, you can have a really high spike where you are and a block away, the air is fine. And it, it is difficult to predict it at this point. You know, you really have to treat like all the precipitation is possibly hazardous. And um, we saw something that was a little concerning about a week and a half ago when they had a series of severe thunderstorms that moved into California. It was right before last weekend. People were emailing me saying, and, and from the, the spots that I could see, looking at all the forecasts, it looked like Manitoba was going to really get hit and um, California. And I had people that emailed me from both those areas. One of them said that her teenage daughter, you know, got, got caught in the rain coming home from school. She had a rash all over. And a lady who um, who had, like, a, a meeting, I think it was in Hermosa Beach. Everybody uh -huh. that was, was at this meeting was looked like they had a sunburn. And it had been raining there for the last two days. And, you know, I mean, you can't – you see – some of these things happening, a lot of it is verifying what these top researchers have been saying all along. And what's right. really and, starting and a lot to go of, up now are there's, a, there's news coming like out now. Even, things. Yeah. Well, there, there, there's news stories coming out now that are starting to refocus on Japan and the Fukushima disaster. In fact, I'm looking at one here. Uh, an internal audit has confirmed uh, observers' concerns that many of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's radiation monitors we're out of service at the height of the 2011 Fukushima power plant uh, meltdown in Japan as if it's an old event and isn't ongoing. But this story came out not too long ago, so it confirms 
you know, I think the first time you, you, you were ever on the program, it confirms, you know, what you've been telling us, which is the EPA, uh, they're, you know, they're billions of dollars being dumped into them, but they're not doing anything to protect the people of this country. Yeah, in fact, on Tuesday's show, we, because that article came out on Tuesday, we were talking about it, and I went to the EPA's website just to see what kind of benefits these people have. I mean, they have just top-of-the-line benefits. If you're an employee there, you know, where taxpayers are paying their salaries and for all these, the retirement and pension and the child care and the office right. and, you know, I mean, they, all of the stuff, tuition reimbursement, and they're not doing their job. You, people no, on they, YouTube are uh, doing a better job than they are. Absolutely. They're, they're, we're paying out all this money. They can't even change the filters in their equipment that are supposed to be changed every two weeks. Some of these cases have went, or some of these uh, filters went for months and months without being changed. All right, we're going to be back, right back with uh, Christina and Dex and more Wide Awake News Radio in five and a half minutes. Guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. we got a full lineup here tonight. We have uh, Christina Malik, uh, uh, Rad Chick radio host. And uh, Christina, what's going on with your program now? You were you were uh, ramping down your everyday programming. Uh, it was going to finish out, I think, in March. And now you're yeah, going to... Yeah, we, we did this for like a one-month crash course in, in radiation, and I have all those uh, shows archived. But we, we have such an outpouring of uh, support that we decided to continue the show. And the uh, station, Orion, was kind enough to give us a time slot, so we're still doing that two days a week. And um, now I'm trying to branch out a little bit and do some writing also for a, a couple different places to just keep trying in, in different venues of, of reaching more and more people. So where, where do we? I, I know I know Rince is publishing some of the stuff you've written. Uh, where else? And you're going to start sending them to me, so I, I'll get them up at my site. But uh, do, you, do you have a website that you're going to be posting everything you write on? Yeah, um, FukushimaFacts.com. Okay. And then I have a, a Facebook page too. We reached like twenty eight thousand people just in the last week on that page, and it's. Uh, Radchick Radiation Research and Mitigation. Okay, very cool. All right, Dex, you've been talking about the radiation, and during the break you said you think this is, you know, and Warren Pollock is in the chat room. And, guys, before I, I – I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. I wanted to right after the break. Warren has been working on – he's in the chat room right now. He's been working on uh, a video, Stop the Lies. Everybody remembers the, the buttons he's, he, uh, he's offering. Matter of fact, I got one. I was wearing it last night on the program. Um, he's put a video together called Stop the Lies. Now, I've only seen about a minute of it, but it is absolutely, from what I've seen, spectacular. Um, and I want to get as many people as possible watching this uh, thing when he puts it out. It looks like it's going to be Thursday or Friday. Um, we'll definitely have it here. If it's Thursday, I'll definitely bring it to, to the program Friday, and we can play it uh, during Karen's uh, time. But uh, please check it out. Make a note uh, or, or uh, get over there, and if you're not subscribed to him, do so. When that video comes out, you're going to want to see it. Warren and I are also going to be working on uh, some projects going uh, going forward. We're just trying to narrow down the, the topic line uh, because as we're finding out, and as you well know, there's so many different things you could talk about and uh, put a video on uh, out about. You could have a 14-hour video, but we're trying to keep it short and concise to reach as many people as possible. So, uh, again, Warren Pollock, Stop the Lies video. We'll be talking more about it. Dex, Fukushima, radiation. We have uh, uh, beef that is uh, infected with mad cow, causing the prices to fall on uh, cattle futures. Man, you know, where, where, where do we go? Where do we go from here? Are we going to find out that the mad cow is really uh, something different, or is this the start of something big, or is this something we see all the time? All of the above. Every couple of years we get a mad cow scare. It's just a core, you know, part for the course, part of doing business. As far as what are we going to see going forward, um, I have to warn everybody. What have I always taught you as, since I've been coming on this program? When they're going to bubble something, they always crash it first. That's how it works, okay? And... Right now, you see that commodity prices have been suppressed for quite a, quite a while. That will change, and you will know it's changing when you see that CRB index turn bullish. 
Right now it's locked in a downtrend, but that that's going to be short-lived. Um, we should start to come out of it as we get closer toward the end of this year. But next year, I'm afraid, it's going to be just unbelievable. You, you, you're going to think that you are definitely in a movie because you're going to see hyperinflation across the entire commodity space. I don't care if you see deflation everywhere else around you. You're going to see hyperinflation when it comes to food, period. Well, and, it's going to be off the hook. And, and Christina, what you do get, what, I mean, we've already seen, I, you know, you, I don't know if, what number it has to be percentage increase to call it hyperinflation, but we've all seen food prices, you know, skyrocket. Of course, it's not in uh, the, uh, the index for gauging inflation in this country. But what you will be able to eat, we can't trust, can we, Christina? You know, one of, one of the things that I've learned and, and tried to share with people is that um, you reduce the amount of your long-term exposure by cutting back on animal products because of bioaccumulation and biomagnification. The radiation gets stronger as it goes up the food chain. And, of course, we're at the top of that chain. So if you're eating more plants, you are limiting your intake because we have to remember in terms of this, this is going to be going on for at least the rest of our lifetime this problem with Fukushima, even if it stays just the way it is now. In order for them to fix it, they have to develop or, or invent new technology to deal with the problem because they can't get that stuff out of the ground. So what we see here, even if it's low levels, the low levels are almost more dangerous because they're, and they're coming at you in many different aspects. It's not just the rain we have to worry about. We have to worry about the water we're drinking and the food that we're eating and they've been measuring cesium in milk since last April, and the numbers keep getting higher. And, you know, the EPA raised all the limits. That's not what you do when it's coming at you from different <laughs> sources. You have to lower the limit. Take into consideration that those numbers are based on a one-time either yearly exposure or lifetime exposure from one avenue. So that means something that you ate one time in your whole life. That's what that number is set at. But when you have low-level low radiation that is in everything and it's cumulative when it gets in your body, these, these substances tend to group together, and then some of them, they work in different ways. They radiate the cells around you. And we all have that potential in us already to have cancer. What keeps it in check is your immune system. So, so keeping track of your health, the best way to do that is just treat yourself like you already have cancer. You know, think of it in those terms and live as healthy as possible and try to eat lower on the food chain. And, and easy things to do are, you know, switching to like a milk alternative, filtering your water, eating more plants and cooking from scratch, which is actually a lot cheaper than buying, going out to eat. Getting, you know, fast food and processed food, there's no nutrition in it. You need that nutrition now. And in fact, a lot of us are taking supplements in, in addition to eating healthy too to make sure that we're covering all our bases and right. you kind of once you get a handle on it you have to kind of tailor it to how you're feeling if you're feeling good maybe you're over mitigating you can back off a little and you can eat some more cheese or you can have a steak dinner here and there but you know at this point like seafood i i say is totally off the list well and i mean not, i mean for for a while and for the, uh, not only be for for Fukushima, but, you know, we, we're seeing some of the deformities coming out of the seafood uh, of the Gulf region because of, uh, correct said, in the BP oil spill. Yeah, um, and, you know, we're finding that out from Al Jazeera, too. We're not yeah. finding it out from news sources <laughs> here. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, that that is, you know, I don't, I don't know if we call that alternative media. If you listen to, you know, to Hillary Clinton or, or any other official, they'll tell you this is state-run, and this kills me. Christine, they call it state-run. You know, it's RT. It's run by the, the, the government of Russia. Al Jazeera, uh, Press TV, these are all government-run. What, what, what are we supposed to believe? We're, you know, we, our government-run institutions, you know, they're like the EPA. They can't change a filter uh, in a piece of equipment, but they can pay themselves over $100,000 a year in a salary and, and this, you know, guaranteed uh, money coming into them for eternity once they retire. But they can't change the filter that you, you know, to do the thing that they were prescribed to do, which is protect this nation against threats such as airborne radiation. 
So, you know, we have government-run media. I don't know if anybody knows this or not or believes it or not, but Dex was talking about it during the break. We absolutely – there's every, every piece of news you get that has to do with the subjects you cover, Christina, or the subject you cover, Dex, that comes right out of the government. And we have a non-reporting, uh, a, a, a mainstream media that seems they can't, they can't make up, they can't do anything but regurgitate the exact same, uh, so-called facts that some government official puts out. I'll kick that to Dex. Uh, okay. Uh, let me answer this way. Itchy, um, I don't know if you're familiar with how Charlie and I banter back and forth. I would like to do that with you, take this time if it's okay with you. Sure. I, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the the shill who works for mainstream media, and I am totally asleep. I'm comatose. I, I don't. I, I believe everything they feed me. I'm a sheep. Okay, and I have. And I'm gonna direct my question toward you. Um, isn't it true that doctors have come out, scientists now saying that that a little radiation is good for you? So if that's the case, then shouldn't we? go outside and, and take up more sun and shouldn't we eat more radiated f- foods so we can build up our immune system and the second part of the question is isn't all this just being hyped up and overblown because if the situation was really that bad wouldn't people move out of and leave japan and stuff like that and the fact that they're staying there doesn't that really say that the situation is under control so isn't all this just a lot of a, a bunch of fear-mongering and, and how much are they paying you to do this, by the way? I'm just curious. <laughs> zero. I'm getting paid zero to do this. But we, you know, you think the problem is bad. Here it's even worse in Japan, and not only in terms of the releases, but in terms of the tamping down of information. And, you know, the, the first thing I would say is uh, do a search and find out what corporations own the media outlet sure. that you watch and listen to. Well, hey, they, 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 they sign my paychecks. I love the media, okay? I love the media. The you, first you thing I tell people question. is get rid of your TV. <laughs> Stop but, using but the get TV to get your information and start and use alternative sources. What you don't, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is many of the people that are in alter- alternative radio had no desire to ever do a radio show or ever saw themselves doing a radio show. But they've they've done it because they're so profoundly disturbed by the connections that they're seeing and and what's going on. When people say the little radiation is good for you, why are they still there? Why are they still there though? Itchy, they're still there. They're chilling. They're they're enjoying life. So maybe the situation is under control, right? Well, Japan also has a different culture of where they don't make waves. What do you mean? They're very respectful. Um, I don't they, think. They, let let, let me interrupt to, because I, I want to make sure that I, Itchy knows. Or itchy, <laughs> it's not Itchy. It's I Chica. Dang it, Dex! Now you got me doing it. I Chica four. I'm gonna call her Christina because that's her name. And I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think uh, she's uh, understands what's going on here. Dex is playing devil's advocate. He's he's speaking like a reporter, would, a so-called reporter uh, that that maybe you know a mainstream reporter that I would have on the program or. Uh, somebody trying to give you the government official line, you know, they're saying, uh, well, you must be crazy, Christina, or you must be crazy, Charlie, because you're talking about these things. You know, and, and you had a good, you sent me in, in Skype today, uh, something that really cracked me up. Uh, you, what am I again? You have your own label, and and I have a label that have been given me as well. What is it? Crash tard. Oh, <laughs> I'm a crash tard. And what are you? A fuku tard. <laughs> okay, Dex, you're a charta tard. You're a you're a stock tard. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So anyway, that that's what he's doing, and and we have done this before, where he's played the the devil's advocate. So I just want to make sure you understood what was going on there. I I do want to address the first part of his no one's the first part questions. of his question because it, yeah, it's it. really important to differentiate and and. So many of the shills and trolls use that as part of their game of minimizing, denying, or blaming this on other problems is the, we get radiation in our everyday life. Sure, you get it from the sun. You get it from minerals that are in the ground. 
You um, can get it from areas of the country where you live because certain areas have higher uh, counts of radon or uranium in their soil. But those substances are nothing compared to the substances that are in nuclear reactors. They're a million times stronger than anything that you would come across in nature. And when we are hear people dying things like, Fukushima? you know, there's cesium in the kelp and there's cesium in the milk supply and, you know, plutonium was found in Boston and Lithuania. That's only one substance. There were 1,600 substances that blew out of the reactors and the spent fuel pools and are continuing to, you know, steam out of the ground every second of every day for the last 13 months. Are people dying over there in Japan, though, in all seriousness? Are people actually dying over there yes, from this? Yes, there's people that are dying over here, too. In fact, um, I'm getting reports, and, and a lot of people have been sending me um, messages and emails about their pets having to be put down. And I had one uh, yesterday that was really disturbing from a guy in Alaska whose dog is outside all the time. The dog died of lung cancer a few days ago, and the vet was also concerned that it could be from contamination. The dog had over 200 nodules of cancer in his lungs. He was in a household where nobody smoked. The dog was outside most of the day. I mean, that's highly unusual. You're coming, you're coming across stories of pets, and pets are lower to the ground, like little kids. You know, animals are lower to the ground where a lot of this contamination is laying. They're coming down with something called gastroenteritis, because all the cells in your GI tract continually divide, and it's cells that are dividing that get affected by radiation the most profoundly. And a lot of animals are coming down with this, and the usual treatments that vets use aren't working. There are a lot what of... What areas of the United States is this happening at? What, what states are you seeing this The farthest rise? away that I've heard is New Jersey. We, and all across East Coast? the country oh, is East what Coast? I would assume, and with radiation exposure, you almost have to assume the worst, and the mitigation for it is basically healthier living. So it's a no-lose situation. I'm sorry. I'm off the new thing. I'm sorry. East Coast, that's only a few hours away from me. You're saying that this is happening on the East Coast? Yeah, that's following the jet stream. It, it, I mean, it, you know, yeah. it, she's been unreported to us how spikes have went up all across the country, and it generally typically follows the pattern of uh, of the jet stream, correct? So now we're having rises right. in it's, cancer. It's, all, it's in the entire northern hemisphere. The East Coast. I mean, I'm getting, you know, reports from, oh, from Germany, people that are posting and sending me images that I'm actually putting into folders for researchers to use in their lectures and in their research papers that they're going to be publishing. The amount of mutations in weeds, tree saplings, fruit trees, vegetables, and some of these pictures that people are sending me now because they saw the video I put out about the dandelions around me that are mutated. They're sending me pictures they took in their garden last summer, and they're like, you know, I don't know why. I took a picture of this because it was so weird. I didn't know what to do with it, but can you use this? And I just put it into folders based on the area of the country, the state, whether it's in Europe or Canada or the U.S., the name of the person who took the picture, when they took it, and I'm, I'm forwarding on to help some of these, but there's so few researchers, independent researchers, that don't have anything to do with this corporate nuke industry that are trying to get the word out. And I mean, you can look back at <laughs> researchers in the past with Chernobyl and what happened to them. Right. There was a guy named Bandashevsky who blew the whistle on, on doing post-mortem tests on children that dropped out of heart attacks, showing that they had um, heart muscle damage, and the Russian government declared him a terrorist and jailed him for seven years. And it turned out all his research was true, and it was a human rights group that finally intervened and get, got him out of prison. But, I mean, he's just one. He's a pretty extreme story, but... You know, just in the United States, Arne Gunderson, when he started speaking out about the nuke industry, he got forced into bankruptcy and foreclosure. Lauren Murray, when she started speaking out, her daughter got kidnapped. Uh, Ann Harris, who worked for Tennessee Valley, who's a whistleblower and continues to work for the nuke industry. Hold up a second. She's sec. still a whistleblower. She's had like 16 cases against the company she works for. 
Um, they blew up her car. They hold actually up a sec. blew up hey, her car. Hey, hold up a sec, yeah. Christina. We're, we're wow. having a... Are you guys hearing this? Do you guys hear this? I think I'm typing. What is <laughs> hearing what? It's chirping, like uh, like typing noise. What is it? I don't know. It sounds They're like uh, alien us. language to me. <laughs> it's not me. Is that you, Ishii? Oh, no, no. Uh-uh. Wow. It was loud. I thought it was you, Charlie. I thought no. you were doing something. I don't know if it sounds like Dex is making a martini. <laughs> oh. No, I'm not doing anything. Make me one. I, I, as a matter of fact, I've been setting as still as I can so you won't hear the clicking. So I don't know. It sounded like, like, like some kind of typing or something. But it's, it's really loud on this end. We, 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 we've got about a minute left, but it is really freaky. Brett, what's going on? Let me. I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of Brett to find out. And Are we being like, tapped in for something? Not sure. JTV audience, I'm shutting you down to see if this is the issue, so thank you for tuning in. Is that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was. Uh, it seems to be. Christina, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm just okay. standing in front of my door wall. There's nothing that's fully totally quiet. That was freaking <laughs> true. Okay, well, yeah, that was freaky, guys. I, I, I'm not sure what it was. Uh, it was really loud and, and really uh, uh, chirp-esque. So I don't know if it was something with JTV. It seems to have went away, so it might have been that. Uh, Christina, thank you very much. Uh, give us give us the website we can find your material on again real quick. FukushimaFacts.com. FukushimaFacts.com. iChica4X on YouTube. Please subscribe. And, of course, Dex, PaulScan72 on YouTube. Uh, captain of the Black Ops training room. He's getting demoted as the program goes on, as you guys see. Please check out uh, his YouTube channel. Subscribe to him. Guys, enjoy Jeff Rins because he's coming up next. Tomorrow night, we have uh, Eric Lovely for hour number one, followed by me and Gabe Elton of uh, Austin Coin. He'll be uh, joining us for hour number two. Enjoy Jeff Rins. He's coming up next. Have a good night. Peace.